Hello everyone, my name is Swingpoint and welcome to Resident Evil Reverse. This is the multiplayer game bundled with Resident Evil 8. And today what I want to do is I want to give you guys a beginner's guide of what is this game, what is going on. I just went to check it out and I had no idea what was going on on the screen. This video is going to help you out a bunch. So let's start from the beginning here. Let's go into the tutorial so you can kind of see things happen. And let's teach you a little bit about Reverse. So first off, what Resident Evil Reverse is right now in the beta, that's all we have right now is the beta, is it's currently a deathmatch kind of game. Meaning that there are four to six players in a match and they're just trying to beat each other up and they're trying to get a high score. The person with the highest score wins. So let's talk about how the scores work. Let's talk about some of the mechanics in the game. And again, ultimately all you're trying to do in this game is get the highest score. And you do that by taking down other survivors, other players that are in the game, okay? So, we're in the tutorial here, and there's a few things I want to teach you right away. So we're going to talk about these weapons here. Every single character has their own weapon, has their own set of weapons, I should say. They have a personal weapon, and they have a standard weapon. The personal weapon on the right side runs out of ammo. These are their stronger weapons, but you can refill the ammo by running around the map and hitting ammo spots. And then on the left-hand side, the standard weapon, it does not run out of ammo, and some characters have a really good standard weapon and some don't. Claire definitely has a really, really good standard weapon with her quick draw army. So let's go ahead here and take a peek at what that looks like. So he has a shotgun here. You see that? That's another thing that they got to teach you that they don't teach you in the tutorial here. So here's what the ammo boxes look like. All you do is walk up to them. You don't have to pick them up. You don't have to do anything special. You just go, I'm touching you. But now we're going to go ahead and defeat Hunk here with our weapons. But now pay attention here. You see this reticle? First off, you need to be aiming in order to shoot. But you see how the reticle closes in? Ooh, can you walk and do the reticle open at the same time? Yes, you can. These are things that are important. So you do extra damage when the reticle is closed. And as long as you're aiming, your reticle is closing. You can be moving. This is different than Resident Evil Resistance, if you're familiar with that game. You don't have the same feature unless you're a specific build on Jill Valentine. So... You get extra damage when your reticle is closed. If it's anything like resistance, it's up to 50% more damage. So it's a big boost. Take out Hunk. Another big thing here that they don't teach you in the tutorial. Okay, let's talk about herbs here. But before we get on to herbs, another thing they don't teach you in the tutorial is that headshots are a really, 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 really big deal in this game. If you don't get your headshots, you're gonna, you're gonna be bad at the game because somebody else is gonna be doing it. Headshots are huge in this game. What I would recommend, again, another thing they don't talk about in the tutorial here, is the options. And once you're in options, go to camera and then take the aiming and turn it way down. It sits in the middle at default and I have mine down turned to the third notch. You might wanna turn it down lower. That's what I'm becoming familiar with as a third notch. I might turn it down more. But again, you're going to be boof, 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 boof all over the place when you try to aim. I highly encourage you, turn your aiming down a little bit. You can keep the normal gameplay one up, but when aiming, turn that down. It'll help you out tremendously. Lower your sensitivity, okay? Seriously, you're going to be much happier if you do that. Oh, and another thing I didn't even bring up is that you can get rid of that comic filter. If you saw the... <laughs> The trailer for the game, you're like, oh god, what is this filter that's on here? I don't have it on here right now, but the way the game looks out of the box is it's gonna look a little something like this. Very comic-y. You even get the halftone texture on top. Makes the game look much brighter, so if you're having trouble seeing things, like it's too dark, you can turn it on or off. But I have mine off, and I'll keep it off for the duration of this tutorial here. Okay? So now let's talk about the next part of the tutorial here, which is the herbs and dodging. Take a look in the bottom left-hand corner, and it'll say caution. You see that? This is a very classic feature in the Resident Evil games. You have different statuses of health. Fine means you're doing pretty good. You have most of your health. Caution means you have, I don't know, somewhere in the middle about half. And then red or danger means you're in trouble a couple of hits from anything and you're going down all right so the way you heal in this game is you see these green herbs very similar to the ammo all you gotta do is walk up to it so you can just be like hello now i'm all healed up and then it goes back up to fine another thing that they were talking about is the dodging <laughs> so the dodging here you see that there's a stamina bar with dodging so one two three that's all he gets and now he can't dodge again until that little trickle there replenishes one of his dodges so every time that circle goes around he replenishes a dodge so all i get is one here right 
So you have to wait for that thing to go around three times for him to be fully, you know, re-equipped with all of his dodges. So that's something you got to keep in mind because dodging is a really big deal in this game. Because when you're dodging, not only are you able to skip past collisions a lot of the time, like let's say a, somebody's trying to smack you like a bioweapon, it also causes you to take reduced damage. If you've played Dark Souls, it's very similar to how Dark Souls was. It's like an immortality roll. Dodging's a really big deal in this game. Now on to the skills. Every character and every bioweapon, we'll get to the bioweapons part of this game shortly, every character has two skills, all right? On your L1 and on your R1. It'll probably change based on whatever platform you're playing on. Each of these skills is unique and every single character skills are unique to them. So for Leon here, he has two skills. His R1 is a roundhouse kick. Bam! <laughs> and then his L1 is dual wielding guns with infinite ammo. And then you'll reload. Bam, 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 bam. Be careful though when you're using those because if you switch to a different weapon, you're gonna automatically cancel them out. So you wanna be careful not to touch your D-pad unless you purposely want to stop using them. But I, again, the akimbo guns are pretty funny in my opinion. Now, something that they don't really teach you in the tutorial here that will be very useful for you if you're playing Leon is this shotgun is very good at stunning. Leon's the only one so far that gets a shotgun. So a really good combo for Leon is to go up to someone, bah, stun him, and then hit him with a roundhouse kick. That's a really, really, really good combo for Leon. Now, every single one of these characters, you want to be thinking about how can I synergize their skills together. For Leon, that's one that works really well for him is the roundhouse kick comboed up with a shotgun. Now, let's talk about special weapons. You can find special weapons on the battlefield, and you can hold a max of two at a time, and they are automatically discarded when their ammo count reaches zero. So, go ahead and take a look over here. Get yourself a rocket. Pretty self-explanatory. There's different types of special weapons that I see in the beta so far. I've seen a grenade launcher, I've seen an acid launcher, and I've seen a rocket launcher, and then I've also seen a spark shot. Spark shot is really nice because it can stun someone in place, but you also run the risk of, like, getting shot in the back while you're trying to stun someone. So, pick your poison. But now let's go ahead and aim this at Hunk and take him out! It's awesome. Ooh, virus capsules. This is one of the most important parts of this game. If you don't understand the virus capsules, you're gonna get rocked, okay? So, let's pick up a virus capsule here and it'll start guiding us through what that all means. So, virus capsules are a precious resource, absolutely. When your HP reaches zero playing as a human, you will transform into a bioweapon. The strength of the bioweapon you become is determined by the number of virus capsules in your possession. So currently in the beta, a couple of things to keep in mind. If you have zero capsules, you are going to become a fat molded. If you have one capsule, you're going to become either a hunter or you're going to become Jack Baker. And if you have two capsules, you're either going to become Nemesis or you are going to become the Super Tyrant. You can only get to a maximum of two, so don't try to pick up more. And these are a really, really, really big deal to pick up because if you're just a fat molded, you're very vulnerable, you're very weak, and you're more likely to give up points, and you are very, very likely to give points to other people. You don't want to be a fat molded unless you got some god blob plays. And <laughs> subscribe to the channel if you want to see some god blob plays because... We got a bunch of them already playing on the live streams that we do. By the way, we stream every single night. Twitch.tv slash swingpoint. Links in the description. We're learning a lot about this game on those streams. I'd love to see you guys over there. So let's move on over here. We just got down. Leon died, right? So a few things are happening right now. One thing you can do is you can lock onto your target. I highly recommend you do that. But let's let's pay attention here. So we just got the hunter because we had one virus capsule. Make sure you lock on. It's, it's, it's much easier to keep track of these survivors when you lock on. Now, if you are in a regular match, it will default to locking on to survivors before it locks on to bioweapons. You can lock on to an enemy bioweapon, but again, it's much more likely to lock on to a survivor first. So we can go ahead and attack him with, survivor, with uh, standard attacks here. <laughs> Assuming I stay close to him. There we go. Nice combo. And then I'm going to go down pretty soon here. There he's down. So a few things are happening on the screen though. <clears throat> when you're playing as a bioweapon, you can track humans and other bioweapons through walls with heat vision. 
So take a peek around. We can see Hunk over there. But something that you may have been paying attention to is the left-hand side of the screen was the health again. The health looks different on a bioweapon. So it started with a big purple bar, and you noticed how over time it started to go down by itself. Bioweapons lose health over time. Just because. That's just the way they're made. They can also lose health if they're taking damage from survivors or other bioweapons, but natively they are losing health over time. Your bioweapon won't just die outright, but it can reach a point where one hit and it'll go down. Does that make sense? So let's move on over here with our heat vision and go take out Hunk. So, skills that consume energy. Some skills will allow you to perform a special finishing move when striking an enemy in critical condition. So, we've had some debate on what critical condition means. This is the beta, so I, this is one of those things I'm really excited to see what gets figured out about it. But the most consistent experience that I've had with actually executing a finisher in a game is when the survivor is knocked down. Not when their health is in critical, not when you're in critical health. It's when the survivor's actually knocked down onto their side, and I'll try to do that here. So let's try to knock him over. One, two, three. So now he's knocked over, now we can eat him. If I hit him. There we go. Every single bioweapon has a finishing move that you can use on a survivor. So that means Nemesis has a finishing move, Super Tyrant has a finishing move, the Toads here, or the Hunters, have finishing moves, and Jack Baker has a finishing move. The blobs, the fat molded, they do not have a finishing move, okay? So bioweapons are extremely powerful, but they lose HP not only when attacked, but also gradually over time. We talked about this. This is what it tells you in the tutorial. So keep that in mind when you're using your bioweapons. Not only do you have to be wary of how close you are to dying, this is also a really good way to counter bioweapons because we were talking about dodging earlier, right? Well, if you're really good at dodging, you can kind of toy with a bioweapon when you're in a match Make it so they keep losing health over time, picking your shots effectively or strategically, and then you can take down a really strong bioweapon just because of this gradual timer. Plot that out. We, we've done it before on stream. Plot that out when you are going up against a bioweapon. Okay? See, yeah, he took me out. And that might just be it. So, when you respawn, you'll have this shimmer on your body. You kind of saw it in the background and it turned off after a little bit. That shimmer means that you are invincible. You start with it as a survivor, and you also start with it when you spawn back in as a bioweapon. You, and to be clear, the way this game works, you start as a survivor. If you die, you turn into a bioweapon. When your bioweapon dies, <laughs> you turn into a survivor. When your survivor dies again, you turn into a bioweapon again. You're always alternating. Okay, they're, they're equal parts of the game. Tutorial complete. Now let's talk about a couple other things and explain a really big part of this game and then I think we'll end the video, okay? Because I don't want to overload you guys with information. Hopefully we got some gameplay showing up here in the background to give you guys a little bit of context. But now let's go on over to play. If you take a look in the bottom right hand corner, there's very important information there. It says view rules. Now this is a big part of the game. Currently, in the beta, there's only one game mode. It's deathmatch. The player with the most points wins. Gain points by killing enemies and earn a kill streak bonus for even more points by killing enemies in sequence. This is how you win the game. You win the game by comboing up. Not only with your skills when you try to take people out, but comboing up your kills. This game is all about combos and streaks. So let's read the revenge part of this game because this is a huge part of the game and it's part of what makes it so fun and chaotic. So if you are killed while you have a kill streak going, the kill streak will be cut short. Get revenge on your killer after respawning and you can regain your kill streak. You'll also regain an extra revenge bonus for killing your revenge target. But if you die again before killing them, your old kill streak will be lost forever and you'll have to start over from zero. This is a really, really, really big deal in this game. Reason being is that your score compounds based off of your streak. So a basic kill is gonna get you like 20 points when you're a survivor. By the way, kills as a survivor get you more points than kills as a bioweapon. That's something they don't teach you in the tutorial. But your basic kill as a survivor is going to be 20 points. If you have a kill streak of two, you're going to get more than 20 points. If you have a kill streak of four, it's going to be even more. If you have a kill streak of all the way up to eight, it's going to be 
I think eight is as high as it goes right now. And you're going to be nailing like 40 points per kill on top of all the other things that you can get bonus points for, like revenge points or, you know, double kill type of things or triple kill type of things. There's a lot of different ways to combo up your points, but your revenge is a really big part of that because if you don't take out the person who took you out, you're going to lose your streak. And if you keep losing your streak, you're not going to be able to run up your score. And if you don't run up your score, you don't win the video game. You want to make sure you protect your streak. So if someone takes you out, your job is to make sure you take them out. All right. It's a very big deal. And there's a couple of techniques that we've already seen just playing a little bit of this game that are really important that I think help manipulate streaks like sacrificing your blob. We can talk about that in another video, or we can talk about comboing up on other people's blobs, or we can talk about, you know, learning to run away from someone who is currently trying to get revenge on you or running them into other enemies all these type of strategies these are things we're discovering already but for now we're going to keep it simple and just let you know that you need to continue your streak if someone if you have a kill streak of five and you get killed by someone you will lose your kill streak if you do not go back and kill the person who killed you but if you do kill the person who killed you not only will you get bonus points for revenge you will also maintain your kill streak Okay, very, very big deal in this game. So this was some of the basics about Resident Evil Reverse. As you see, every single character has their own skills, their own passive skills, and then so do the bioweapons. They all have their own set of skills. They don't have passive skills, but they have their own set of skills. There's a lot to take in in this game, and we're already taking in a lot with our streams. If you want to see videos on how to get good with each one of these survivors, that's what we're going to be working on, or how to get good... <laughs> with these bioweapons we've already won a match with every single survivor so we can do videos for that if you want to see a win with chris a win with jill a win with leon and claire and ada and hunk i already got seven matches done for you where we have won with every single person seven six six matches where we've won with every single person I plan to upload those. I plan to talk about some of the strengths and weaknesses of these characters. If you guys are interested in those, or if you have tips of your own, I'd love to see them in the comments down below. Thank you guys so much for being here. This is the beginning of what might be a really awesome journey with Resident Evil Reverse. This is the beta. The game is going to be completely different when the full game comes out with Resident Evil 8, but this is our initial preview. I hope this helps you out. I hope it helps you have a better time while you're playing in the beta this week. And again, if you guys enjoyed this video, Go ahead and consider subscribing. We also stream every single night, twitch.tv slash swingpoint. I'd love to see you guys there. So many of you followed me over from the live stream we did on YouTube. It was a treat to have you all over there. Thank you so much for following me over to Twitch. But again, with that, thank you guys. You guys are awesome. And I'll see you in the next video that we do around here.